there's so many things to be keeping track of right now. Obviously, I'm still hot on the trail of The Great Taking. Got a really incredible episode coming up for this Friday's release. Uh, we're going to be doing these weekly till I'm done with the series. It's going to be a little bit longer because other things we have to talk about, like the CIA's involvement in setting up the DTCC and really what are derivatives and what do those actually mean and things like what is the safe harbor provision and et cetera. There's things I think we need to know more of uh, to, to get around. Now, the good news is that reporting series has already been bringing people out of the woodwork. I've been having people emailing me, calling me. Um, I wouldn't call them whistleblowers, but these are pretty deep insiders. They're like, hey, here's some stuff you need to understand. And so I'm gathering all of that. So thank you to everybody who's been reaching out, helping me get my arms around this. Now, I'm your information scout, so I have to also turn to other things because the world is doing a lot of very interesting things all at once. And today we have to talk about this came out in the Financial Times. So I was interviewing Stephen Flood this morning of Gold Corps, and he alerted me to this. Now he's in Dublin, Ireland, so he gets five hours head start. He said, hey, did you see this thing in the Financial Times today that somebody leaked Russia's internal, deepest, most secret nuclear um, posture documents. Okay, so great. This is the bombshell news. Now, I'm putting the date in yellow because we have to see these things in context. We can't just under see this as a standoff all by itself. So February 28th, remember that. Um, this is when it comes out, and it's leaked. Russian military files reveal criteria for a nuclear strike. Kind of a soft headline. It's more than that. And by the way, this is one of your subscription benefits. I actually, I went, uh, my subscription to the Financial Times, I let it lapse a long time ago because I don't like paying for propaganda, but I thought this was such an important report. I resubscribe um, $279 that you don't have to pay to get access to this and other such propaganda. I take the bullet for you. Um, and so remember, so just a little context before we get there. February 26th, this comes out where allegedly... The Russian military intelligence services caught this guy, kind of an unassuming guy, who said that he was trained and working with special communications <clears throat> collection and uh, detonating explosive devices. And he was doing all of this. And here's the transcript. He said on January 31st of this year, 2024, he received a task from the curator to pick up an explosive device from a hiding place and use it to blow up a car. What was promised to you? $4,000. Where was the explosive device supposed to be used? In the underground parking of the Four Seasons Hotel in Moscow. I was supposed to pick up the explosive device from a hiding place, place it under the car. Who was it targeting? I wasn't told. Do you know who the target was now? Yes, American journalist Tucker Carlson. Okay, so that's the, the 26th. We get this report comes out, and I'll show you where that came from later. But I just want to set up that we have that coming out. And then we have this uh, report from the New York Times about the CIA operating in Ukraine. And now we have this Financial Times report. So I think we have to see it within the suite of these things. There is an intelligence battle operating. We're out here in the cheap seats. We don't actually know what's going on. We just know the effect of what they want us to know. So this is something Russia wanted us to know about. And this is something the Financial Times wants us to know about. <clears throat> they say here, quote, Vladimir Putin's forces have rehearsed using tactical nuclear weapons at an early stage of conflict with a major world power. According to leaked Russian military files, that include training scenarios for an invasion by China. Now, leaked. What does leaked mean? Leaked could mean stolen, could mean that we've penetrated their systems. It could mean that somebody inside is an agent or a double agent has been turned. Who knows? But leaked is is makes it sound like somebody inside Russia gave them to us. I'm not sure that's true. We don't have any data for this. By the way, nothing in this article reveals anything about the actual documents. We don't get to see them. We don't get to evaluate them. Somebody else evaluated them, told the Financial Times about it. So again, this is a cloak and dagger world. Who knows what reality is, but we do know what they want us to know about these things. So we know what they're telling us about them. And here's one of the most important things. They said the classified papers seen by the Financial Times describe a threshold for using tactical nuclear weapons that is lower than Russia has ever publicly admitted, according to experts who reviewed and verified the documents. Oh, they've lowered the threshold. Those evil Ruskies, you know, they've got a, this thing. They haven't even publicly told anybody about this. I disagree. 
Putin has been out there for a very long time. Medvedev, same thing. They've said, listen, NATO, if you really want to push us too hard in Ukraine, we will remind you that we are a nuclear superpower. In 2014, after the whole Maidan revolution that we now know was put on by Western intelligence agencies, hello, CIA, and all those snipers that were like pew pew and killed people. Oh, no, Yanukovych has got to flee Kiev, right? Um, those all came from an area, a quadrant that was controlled, we know now, by our side, not the other side, um, et cetera, and so forth. And we know that uh, the eastern provinces in the Donbass had 14,000 people killed by people who we now know were trained by C CIA and Western interests, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So we, we, we know, we know all of that. And as well in 2014, right after all of that sort of developing, Russia took the opportunity to fire off one, at least one set of every nuclear capable platform. And, and by the way, they have a lot of these so-called tactical nukes, which are different from strategic bombs. The tactical nukes are meant to be used in a battlefield. The strategic bombs fly over the North Pole and ICBMs and take out cities and do all that other stuff. Right. So, uh, they fired off all of their platforms from submarines, planes, trains, automobiles, trucks, artillery, from silos. And they just basically said, if you, if you were wondering if this stuff rusted away in the silos, the answer is no, everything fired off. They took video of it. They put it up on YouTube. I talked about it back in the day. I'm like, why is Russia telling us so demonstrably that they have nukes and they work, right? We should know this. But I think they think that their adversaries may have forgotten this. Remember, this is what happens when your managerial class grows up in a world of abstractions and starts leading by abstractions, and they forget about how the real world works. And everything I've heard from Putin is he's a little concerned that Western leadership has maybe lost its grasp of the basics of how reality functions. And you might think he's got a point because you can see Germany is busy trying to get rid of its own farmers. And same with much of Europe. And it's a very bizarre thing. You're like, do you guys not know where your food comes from? Are you that living in a la-la world of abstraction that you've forgotten where food comes from? The answer is, yeah, it seems so. At any rate, uh, carrying on, <clears throat> they, where did these come from, we wonder? The cache consists of 29 secret Russian military files drawn up between 2008 and 2014. So these are at least a decade old. So this means whatever, wherever we got these from, these were compromised a decade ago or more. Uh, in, uh, well, at least a decade ago, I guess, including scenarios for war gaming and presentations for naval officers, which discuss operating principles for the use of nuclear weapons. Criteria for a potential nuclear response range from an enemy incursion on Russian territory to more specific triggers, such as the destruction of 20 percent of Russia's strategic ballistic missile submarines. But the common element here is they're basically saying, look, if you attack us. That's when we would use these. To me, that seems like a perfectly reasonable threshold. I mean, they're basically saying, if you're attacking Russian territory, we may use these things. I don't think that's anybody just like, we all know that in war, you can have all the rules you want, but they will go right out the window the minute you start losing. We all know that if the United States was losing its own territory to say Chinese invasion on the West Coast, would we use tactical nukes? You betcha. Right. Um, that that's, there's nothing they're spinning. This as if this is some kind of like a, a big revelation that Russia now has this weird standard. Everybody who's got tactical nukes uses them as a defensive deterrent and says, by the way, we will use them if you come and attack our country. So, uh, I don't think there's anything new to me in that, but what is interesting is again, propaganda 101. Let's explore the ways in which they are using their psyop propaganda wording verbiage to help this I think is that this I think is the heart of the article. I could be wrong, but I think it's this. Uh, quote: This is the first time we have seen documents like this reported in the public domain, hinting that maybe we've been seeing these things privately. Hey, eh? uh, said Alexander uh, Gabuev, uh, director of the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center in Berlin. Hey, there's the Carnegies again. They show that the operational threshold for using nuclear weapons is pretty low if the desired result can't be achieved through conventional means. Hmm. The threshold is low. If we can't achieve, they can't achieve what they want through conventional means. This is a really bizarre way to talk about breaking the seal on using nuclear weapons, right? Because, so that's interesting because they've set the frame here 
that there is, there are desired results that are, are reasonable. And if you can't get those desired results, you can't get those conventionally, maybe nukes fit in. This is a softening piece, which if you don't pay attention to it, works its way into your subconscious and you, and you start thinking there's a frame that's been inserted here. And the frame is, you know, if you can't achieve your results through conventional means, there are other ways, right? It was on February 25th that this got released, which was the New York Times big expose about the spy war and how the CIA has been inside Ukraine for a long time, training them, helping them do things. Uh, so why, you know, we all know this, the New York Times does not, is not a news organization. It's a propaganda outlet. So 